Deep in the heart of the new forest is Bewley, a house that hid a wartime secret. They were known as the Hush Hush Troops. A secret army of agents who would infiltrate occupied Europe. I blew up a train, and that train was full of Germans. Their work was perilous. And I got shot, shot in the lung and the liver. They said, if you're taken and you're always tortured, this will kill you within two minutes. These brave heroes were graduates of the most secret establishment in wartime England. By the summer of 1940, Adolf Hitler was master of Europe. The German army had the British mainland in its sights. It was very much the dark days of the war for Britain. They'd been pushed out of almost all of the continent. They were very much pushed back on the back foot. But Churchill had a plan. To train men and women to infiltrate enemy-occupied territory and cause mayhem for the Germans. These secret agents were trained here on the Bewley Estate in the New Forest. The Bewley Estate dates from the 13th century and is owned by Lord Edward Montague, a distant cousin of Winston Churchill. Bewley had been home to the Montague family for over five centuries. Hidden away in 10,000 acres of New Forest, Bewley was the perfect place to hide secrets. Bewley was really like an island. The north and the east and the west were forest, and the south was the salient. So we were surrounded on all sides by the forest, except for the sea. One person who knew the secrets of Bewley was the young Noreen Baxter. When war broke out, 18-year-old Noreen was at school in London and busy planning her future. I wanted to study medicine. I was going to really sort of stun the world with my amazing knowledge, and then I decided that I would probably marry some handsome young man, have six children, and settle down in a, in a cottage in the country with a, a pony poking its head over the fence, you know? <laughs> but Noreen's life didn't go according to plan. She had a talent, and one that her country badly needed. In 1939, Noreen was attending a French language school in London to develop her flair for languages. It was this skill that would change the course of her life and lead her on an incredible journey. I was at the Lycée Français de Londres, and uh, at the age of 18, you had to leave any studies unless you were doing medicine and um, either go and work in an arms factory or go into the arms forces. Well, I had no, no desire to work in a factory, so I decided I would be a Wren, which is the naval forces. Well, really, because I liked the hat. I thought it was terribly coquettish. But when Noreen went to join up, she was taken to one side. I was shut in a kind of broom cupboard without a window, um, with a, an ageing, rather severe officer, army officer, and without any further preamble, just said, nobody, but nobody must know what you do here. Not your mother, your father, your sister, your brother. Well, I, ne I never found out who else wasn't supposed to know, because at that point, uh, an enormously tall Irish guards officer with a squeaky voice, I found out afterwards he'd been shot in the, in the, in the throat, came in, squeaked all over the place, and they both flew off, squawking down the corridor. I began to wonder what sort of zoo I'd landed in. Noreen had landed in the Baker Street headquarters of the newly formed Special Operations Executive, known as SOE. She was immediately recruited. The SOE had desperate need of people who spoke languages, which is something that the, the Brits are not famous for. SOE was a top secret organization recently established on Churchill's orders. SOE was the official name, the Special Operations Executive, um, but it was engaged in, in rather unusual work. Um, some people called it the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Uh, it was also known as uh, Churchill's Secret Army. 